There's no business like none of your business. So here's the thing. I love the sound of a good fretless bass, but I've always been unhappy with the sounds of the instruments that I had. And then I found out that some people on the internet posted that you needed to harden the fingerboard in order to improve resonance characteristics. Some people use liquid polyester, some people use two-component epoxy, and other people use cyanoacrylate. Yep, super glue. So I decided to give it a shot on my old bass. And I had the impression that the sound did improve somewhat, but I didn't do proper measurements. I didn't like the results enough to keep the instrument, so I got myself a brand new 5-string from Ibanez, and I thought, well, let's do this properly this time, with before and after comparison and with spectral analysis. Spoiler alert, I was not happy enough with the result to recommend the procedure. So see for yourself if you like the results, and if you don't, be glad you didn't blow a thousand bucks on an instrument that you almost ruined, like I did. Well, not quite, but as I said, the results were quite underwhelming. So, judge for yourself if you want to try this. So here's what we need. A fretless base, obviously, and then some CA glue. The thin variety and the thick variety. Then we definitely need some activator because CA glue is a contact glue and without contact it takes very long to set. Then sandpaper. Try 400 to 600 grit. Speaking of sanding paper, here's a thing I wish I had paid better attention to from the beginning. You want to use a sanding block. Now this here is made from wood and it's covered with a little bit of felt padding and it will keep the sandpaper much straighter than you can with your fingers. And it will give you a much straighter fingerboard as a result. Next thing, water. Why water you ask? Well, evidently, because we're using waterproof sanding paper. That, first of all, keeps the dust out of the air, but it also doesn't clog up. And then we need some masking tape. Only the best Tamiya masking tape, because it doesn't stick. This is for model building, and it's the best you can get. And then for the rough edges, we can use some painter's masking tape with plastic foil attached. And now a word about brushes. Originally, I hadn't intended on using any because I didn't want to buy a new brush for every single coat of paint. But the layers applied with kitchen tissue were so uneven that I decided to bite the bullet on this one and to waste a handful of brushes on this project. And then a few days after I had finished the project, I found that it is very well possible to clean CA glue out of brushes with acetone. So if you want to try this, do yourself the favor, don't throw your brushes away. Get yourself a bottle of acetone and reuse your brush and get proper layers from the beginning. And for polishing up the finished results, we need some buffing compound and a power drill with matching bits, that is, buffing wheels. And finally, a spongy eraser to remove the residue. Talking about cleaning, here I'm using some isopropanol and some white spirit or mineral spirit or mineral turpentine, whatever you want to call it, and some kitchen tissue. So let's take off the strings and use a nice crank for this because it makes things easier. Then, cleaning. Why? Well, because most of the dirt on a fingerboard is grease. Grease is fat. And fat is basically the natural enemy of any glue. Nice and clean. That should work. And now let's get to masking. We want to keep the glue and the water as far away from the sensitive parts of the instrument as possible. Be sure to use the good Tamiya tape on the instrument and the rough stuff on top of the Tamiya tape. And then we should have something like this. We use the thin glue only once for the first layer to seal the surface. Apply evenly. Spread out. This was before the use of brushes and trust me this method sucks. Then fix the glue with the activator. And give it a quick wipe. Even with the activator, do give the glue some time. And now for sanding. Wash out your sanding paper regularly and please, please don't be as stupid as I was on this first go and use the sanding block. Also, don't forget to wipe the fingerboard from time to time. After all, we want to be able to see what we're doing. 
As you can see after sanding, the thin glue results in quite the patchy surface. So we need bigger guns now. Take out the thick glue. And as I said, please use the brushes. You don't want to worry about the kitchen tissue tearing like it does here. You don't want to have to sand off paper residue from your fretboard. Okay, so apply the activator as usual. Let it set. And after you've had a good one, don't forget to wipe. After sanding, this coat still has got a lot of holes. Time for the next coat. I'm applying it straight this time because I'm running low on glue. And I'm out of juice. But since this was my first pass with a brush, I was able to spread it out more or less evenly. The problem with applying super glue is of course not to glue your applicator to your workpiece. And speed is the solution to this problem, which is why kitchen tissue sucks so much at this. So don't slow down and you should be fine. And we've still got holes. Really time to use that sanding block next time. After waiting for two days for the new super glue to arrive in the mail, we're back on track. Wiping off the excess from the sides. Remember to check the dry coat after you've fixed it with the activator. Wipe it clean. Remember to wash the dirt out of the sanding paper from time to time so that it doesn't clog up. Remember to wipe the instrument itself. Rinse and repeat. After three or four layers, you should finally have a closed coat. Time to polish. Apply the buffing compound to the buffing wheel and go to town. I also quickly remembered from the first time that battery-driven drills just don't have enough juice for this kind of job. So after draining three batteries in two minutes, I switched to a line-powered drill. Ooh, yeah, that's more like it. I have no idea about buffing, so I thought it might be a good idea to be extra safe and use two directions perpendicular to each other, not just one. Can't tell you if that's really necessary, but the result is nice, so doesn't hurt. Eraser sponges like this one are made from melamine foam and you will find them under product names like Magic Eraser. Car workshops use them for removing buffing compound residue, so that's what I'm using them for too. But you will also find them sold as household cleaning utensils. Mmm, shiny. Alright, let's finish this sucker off. After carefully removing the masking, let's sand away the overspill at the sides of the neck. And you know what? Once we're at it, let's give that nasty finish at the back of the neck a good overhaul too. A light 600 grit treatment will give it a nice satin finish that is much smoother to play than the original surface that was, frankly, quite bumpy. Careful not to sand away too much though. You don't want light patches all over the dark painted neck. All right, moment of truth. Let's check the before and after. This is the time to close your eyes if you don't want to know which is which. the visual analysis. The color shadows in the spectral analysis show the differences between old and new signal. Red shadows show where the old signal was louder, green shadows do the same for the new signal. The 
frequency range we're looking for is between 100 and 5000 Hz. This is where the slightly nasal sounding mid-range overtones are located. And it seems to me the modified fingerboard lost a bit of sustain in that area, like here. But then again, results aren't consistent. Just look at the analysis. It depends greatly on the individual note. And of course, there are variations in the way I played these notes. It would have taken a robot to get identical performances. did find a significant increase in higher frequencies above 6 kHz, but this is where the string scratching is. So I dialed it back down with the tone control. So was it all worth it? Well, it seems I traded the overtones I like for the ones I don't like, so nah, no recommendation there. But on the bright side, I mean I didn't completely wreck the instrument, I just like the original sound slightly better. Now evidently this is not what I was going for, but hey, I learned a lot in this project and if you have too, feel free to like, share and don't bother subscribing. I've got a day job. I won't be shelling out videos left and right like there's no tomorrow. But you can always leave me a friendly comment down below in the comments section. And if you had a good one, don't forget to wipe. <laughs>